Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, according to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, two-thirds of Americans are overweight and one-third are obese. Mm. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because obesity is associated with all kinds of health problems, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, just to name a few. Now, the CDC also estimates that the annual medical cost of obesity is in the neighborhood of $150 billion a year. Billion dollars. Billion with a B. My goodness. While sticking to a diet and exercise plan helps some people lose weight, unfortunately, others are not so successful. Why do some people have trouble losing weight no matter what they try? Well, the answer may just lie in their genes. And here to discuss obesity treatment from the Center for Individualized Medicine is Mayo Clinic gastroenterologist Dr. Andres Acosta. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Acosta. It's nice to see you again. Tracy, uh, Tom, thank you so much for having me back, and I'll be delighted to be talking about our new uh, findings from our research. All right, and so uh, once again, it's Andres. Correct. Does that sound good? (laughs) good? That sounds great. (laughs) So, Dr. Acosta, when I read that, I think maybe uh, all of the problems begin with my parents and grandparents. Is that what we're saying? It is an important factor, and our genetics have a strong contribution or predetermination to what our weight and what we're going to do when we're trying to lose weight. At the end of the day, through evolution, we have been trying to create this, or we have developed into humans that we're trying to save energy, to survive. And that's our instinct as any species. So for every hundred genes that we have that we try to burn, that we try to save calories, we only have one that we are ready to burn calories. So Hmm. 100 to 1, and the odds are against us. But our environment plays a major role into this. So the decisions that we make with our genetic predisposition are contributing to this obesity epidemic. What I think is important is we need to try to understand those genes and how our genetic contribution predisposed to this and our environment in only to predict who is going to respond to what and move into the treatment of obesity. Because at this point, as you well said, our new statistics on the obesity epidemic are alarming Two-thirds of us are suffering from obesity, and we need to find a better way, an individualized way, to treat this problem instead of treating like everyone has the same problem. So, you know, this is uh, the genetic part of this is something that we've known forever. I mean, if, you're, if your parents were uh, obese, you were more likely to be obese than if your parents weren't. So what's, what's different now? I mean, you, you, you've realized uh, that there is, in fact, uh, we've known that there's a genetic component, but what can you do with that information? How can you help people? Yeah, we need to look at obesity like we can look at any other disease. Let's use an example, for example, breast cancer. We know that Someone might have breast cancer, but some of the people may have a genetic contribution or some not, like the BRCA test. We need to look at obesity exactly the same way. Some people might have obesity. They may have a genetic contribution with a specific gene that is contributing to something specifically. So in things like the, how you feel full, your appetite levels, how you burn calories or your burning energy. And once we identify those specific pathways or what we call those phenotypes within each of member with obesity or each patient with obesity, then we can identify what genetic contribution they have. And more importantly, we can try to subgroup them into an individualized approach in order to manage them accordingly to their phenotype. So if I come to the Individualized Medicine Obesity Center, what's going to happen? So we're moving obesity beyond just saying, hey, you have a few extra pounds, you should lose weight. We're saying, you have obesity, we, let me find out what is your obesity, why you have become at this weight, even though you've been trying to diet and exercise now for years, why do you have not been successful? And in order to do that, we do certain testings. We test your energy expenditure. You test, we test your level of fullness, your appetite, your gastric emptying. We test your genes, how you're going to respond to medications using a pharmacogenomics approach. And we measure your body composition. So once we have all that information, we try to identify into which group the individual will lay. And then based on that, we will try to give a more specific intervention. So in summary, a few appointments, a few testing, and then we can find out who is going to respond to what and being very successful. As uh, we have been saying in our recent blogs, we're doubling the weight loss response 
compared to conventional treatment. Oh, that's impressive. So pharmacogenomics, uh, we've learned about that from, from previous guests, but uh, in, in the field of obesity, that suggests that you have some medications that actually work and pharmacogenomics are gonna help you decide which medication for which patient, but I didn't realize there were any medications for weight loss that actually did work. Correct, so we have five medications approved for uh, weight loss, approved by the FDA, that are used uh, for in a chronic manner, so for years uh, have been approved. And what we're trying to move now is into a more specific use of those medications. The reason why we're moving to those lines is because one of these medications, there will be about 30% of patients who do not respond. 30% of patients will be okay responders, but 30% of patients will be great responders. And what I mean by great responders is they will lose more than 10% of their total body weight in a year and sustain that weight loss. So what does that mean when you lose more than 10% of your body weight and uh, you sustain that weight loss? There's an improvement on your diabetes or prevention of your diabetes or your pre-diabetes, sure. improvement on your hypertension, improvement on your cholesterol and lipid panels, improvement on your sleep apnea, and many other comorbidities that are associated with obesity. So for that reason, we really push to try to hit that 10% of more of total body weight loss and sustain. And you said that your program is twice as successful as most programs. And most programs, the success rate is what, 15, 20, at most 30%? No, unfortunately, we wish we would be so successful. Uh, most of our programs uh, contribute somewhere around 8 to 10% of the total body weight loss. And right now, with our approach, we're getting closer to 15% of total body weight loss. But the most important thing is we need to talk about the individual. So in the conventional programs or standard of care, only about 30% of patients reach that 10%. Yeah. With our approach, we're getting close to 74%. Really? So um, it's something that is um, quite innovative, and we're still doing a lot of research behind this. But I think that we don't need to wait for the research to be completed. I think we need to start offering this to our patients so we can help them and they can benefit from this new way of seeing obesity and treating it. We have about uh, 60 seconds left, but I would... I'm concerned that someone might hear this and think, well, my parents were heavy, my grandparents were heavy, I'm heavy, and now this explains it. It's genetics. Yep. So I'm There's off the hook. There's nothing I can do about I'm it. I'm off right. the hook. And I want you to discount that thought or maybe change their thinking around. I think we have an explanation, but the treatment will still come with uh, severe lifestyle changes, a diet, and an exercise program. So, yes, we might blame a liver or grandparents, but we also need to blame our decisions of staying in the couch and overeating as the major contributions for obesity. So let me see if I can summarize it. And, and so 70% of your patients are able to uh, reduce their total body fat by 15 to 20%. Is that about right? By 15%. 15%. Yes. Yeah. And that's twice as good as anything heretofore. Correct. And that is not, but that is only with pharmacotherapy. If we talk about endoscopic devices such as the intragastric balloon or the endoscopic sleeve is higher as well as with surgery is higher so and each of them will have their own individualized approach all right so all our listeners want to know or two-thirds of them or a third of them at <laughs> least who are obese want to know how do we get into this place yeah the simplest way right now is to send us an email to uh rst in div so i n d i v for individualized so rst in div obesity at mayo.edu all right we'll put it on our website that's excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. Dr. Acosta, thanks so much for being with us. Dr. Acosta is part of the Individualized Obesity Treatment at Mayo Clinic. He's a gastroenterologist. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tom and Tracy, for having me. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll hear about updated guidelines for blood donors. You're listening to Mayo Clinic Radio on the Mayo Clinic News Network. <laughs> 